Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Dan Oman, Ashley Mayu taking a look at race number eight at Santa Anita on Saturday. Could be a nice prep for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Remember, the Philly Mare Turf this year is at a mile and three-eighths. The Grade 2 Rodeo Drive race number eight is at a mile and a quarter for the Phillies and Mares. Before we take a look at the field, here's a chance to get a nice deal on past performances this weekend with graded stakes throughout the nation. 10% off all DRF past performances. Use the coupon code DRFTV10. Shop now by accessing the QR code on your screen. Green. Here's the field for the Rodeo Drive. And Ashley, we were talking before we came on. You can make a case for just about everybody in this race. Not just about. I think there's a case to be made for every single horse in the field, at least to be in the top three. Um, and to me, looking at the card, maybe the entire card, definitely the graded stakes races. This was by far the best field, in my opinion. Evenly matched. A couple of really nice horses in here that are coming off wind, Sunset Glory. I think it's going to get tested for class, but really has been on a roll here in 2024 as a four-year-old filly you can see be your best coming out of races in new york ice cream you scream another one on a wind streak and beach bomb i mean go down the page i'll name all of them by the time i'm done this is a really great event let's take a look at our time form u.s pace projector the unbeaten three-year-old filly ice cream you scream is expected to make the lead stretching out past a mile and an eighth for the first time although i won't be surprised if the three be your best is forward getting blinkers in her first start for sappy joseph she was the pace setter in the american oaks last year and ran a good second utilizing that style pretty much agree with the projection here. And the only thing I think is maybe the two Sunset Glory could be a little closer. I don't want to say a ton closer, but that last out effort at a mile and three ace, they went just below 49 for the half in there. And she was much more forward than her other trips. So she showed a little bit of versatility, but I do think overall the four is probably the pace setter and the three to be very close to things early on. Lucky Girl does have the tactical speed to work out a nice trip, and she is already a three-time stakes winner at Santa Anita. Now, all those races came in a mile, but I like that they're incrementally stretching her out this form cycle. Her most recent start was a good second-place finish behind Hang the Moon, and she had a long way to come in the stretch of this race. She's last turning for home. She comes with a good kick to finish second. I think she's slowly improving. It's just that her buyer's speed figures a little bit might have plateaued at sort of the mid-80s mark, and she might have to do just a little bit better she might have to but you know i thought this was a nice performance in the end for her to kind of cruise to a second place finish and both her and hang the moon they uh they lit up the topo the board there excuse me the dollar exactly just over 200 bucks they both didn't take a lot of love in there and how the pace unfolded they both rolled from towards the back of the pack so she is going to need i think a little bit of pace to run at um i thought it was improved performance though and i'm curious to see her go further she's been able to gradually stretch out now since six and a half back in May. And she's just gotten a little bit better. I know her figures are all in the same wheelhouse. Um, but you know, if, if the pace is at least, I don't know, honest or what we'd expect at this level, she showed that she can't close. I think she does need an honest pace. You saw both Lucky Girl and Hang the Moon rally from out of it. Hang the Moon, uh, arguably a little bit of a better trip because she was able to save ground turning for home. But when they both come from far back like that, you have to think that the pace is fast and Lucky Girl might have taken advantage. She is in very good form, as is Sunset Glory. And really the question going into Sunset Glory's last race is how far does she want to go? Well, she passed that test in the CTT and TOC stakes going a mile and three eighths, utilizing excellent tactical speed. I thought that pace was pretty solid considering that distance and she was able to grind it out she's won three in a row for michael mccarthy and still has upside yeah and talking about the pace last time out that's why i thought maybe she could be a little bit closer to it than we saw in the pace projections because she wasn't far off of it she tracked in second and i think the interesting thing with her is um her progression another one that i think has gotten a little bit closer with each of her races and part of that maybe is the distance right going further you don't want to be as far off of it and the pace is typically a little bit slower but um she's answered each of her tests to this point it's tough to face winners for the first time it's then tough to go into a stakes race but she's done everything right to this point and yeah this is a big step up in the fact that she's going to face some mirrors in here with more foundation but um i think she's a major player in here and she sh she should or could get a big piece 
Be Your Best, the number three, is on a 12-race losing streak, but she has kept some tough, tough competition. Multiple grade one placed in the interim. She does have speed. She's run well in Southern California in the past. And I like that Safi Joseph's putting blinkers on. Her most recent race was a tough second-level allowance in New York, and she was sort of pushing the pace while being kept well off of the rail, was forced three wide into the third turn, and then just got a little bit tired behind Aspen Grove, who, of course, is also back in this race. Another horse that you wonder, how much up side is left after 14 starts but i think we'll see renewed speed yeah it's so tough she sh kind of started hot early in her career and part of it is what you mentioned she's been in really tough spots but you also wonder that what that's done to her confidence um you mentioned the blinkers go on that's intriguing she's never raced with blinkers ever in her career her last two breezes both at saratoga on the main track they've been good and her effort last time out wasn't bad. I guess the question is, how do you use her and Aspen Grove? They're both different styles, where Be Your Best is probably more forward. Aspen Grove likes to close from off of it. Um, it it's just tough to know what to do with her. And Safi does very well with his new acquisitions. And but Kyle Frey and the Irons here. Um, there are things to like, but I just wish she might have had, I don't know, another start or a better performance even last time out to give me a little bit more confidence that she's going in the right direction. The four is I scream, you scream. She's four for four, flawless in her career, and she looked good in the Del Mar Oaks last time out against fellow three-year-old Phillies. Distance was a question for her in this race. She was stretching out to a mile and an eighth for the first time, and she seemed a little bit green on the lead going into the first turn where she sort of ducked out a little bit. She let another horse take over the lead, then re-rallied to make the front. She's on her left lead all the way through the, uh, through the wire, which is a bit concerning as she goes a little bit farther in here. And I'm also a little bit concerned as to what she beat four horses have come out of this race none hit the top three in their next start with the best buyer speed figure of an 81 so she's stepping up in class she's stretching out in distance but she's also pretty good and she's pretty fast from the gate yeah and you mentioned the horses that she beat last time a lot of them she faced two starts back as you can kind of look at the top three in both of them and and see that visually um the lead is a little concerning now she's gonna have to go from a mile and an eighth to a mile and a quarter but um it seems to me that she's gone to the track many mornings now. You can see for those published drills, four works since that race in the middle of August. Um, I, I bet Phil D'Amato has been mindful of that. And again, she's young. She's just a three-year-old filly. Um, we were looking at other horses here that certainly are four, five. They're older than her. Um, but another one, you know, when Phil D'Amato has them going in good form, they tend to stay in form. And he could have a big day with types like this on Saturday out at Santa Anita. And I just wonder from a pace perspective, even though she's going longer, Dan, is there a situation where she's just doing her own thing, loping along on the front end? You never know, especially with these longer races. And she switched leads on cue during that September 22nd workout. She's done it before in the past. So we'll see what we get from Ice Cream, You Scream. Returning to Santa Anita, where she's had success. The five is Beach Bomb. This is a Group 1 winner in South Africa who made her North American debut for Grand Motion. In this race at Monmouth Park, it's a middle-distance event, the Violet Stakes. And Beach Bomb has sort of a grinding style that makes me think maybe a mile and a sixteenth in the States is a little bit too short for her. The pace wasn't very fast fast but mama june who is odds on just runs by them all but watch beach bomb continuing to find a little bit more as this race gets closer to the end i think she finds a really good spot stretching out in the rodeo drive yeah, she found a point in that stretch there at mama where she took off and she had her head up a little bit like she knew it was time to go and then she settled into it and i thought she was rolling late and grand motion with these south african horses it's been a little bit of a new learning curve when i saw mccolonial explain the process when they have to come over and go in quarantine and i think they were going to upstate new york it's not a short quarantine process it's very long and um when you consider all of that i think for a first race in the barn after going through all of that that's a nice effort i think she's going to love the added distance i think there's a ton of upside and you know she's accomplished to this point in her career and just to see her stateside debut go so well um, I think she could take a huge step forward here. Hang the Moon, the number six, has done really nice work since switching to the D'Amato barn. Two for three. We saw her win the maybe, cutting the corner into the stretch, slicing her way through horses and getting up. And she beat a really good field in that race. I mean, Anisette and Didia are good horses that are prepping for the Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf. Hang the Moon might have gotten the good setup and trip that day, but she showed she could hang with those horses. Yeah, second longest shot on the board in that event. And kind of looking at the top two, we talked about it when we talked about Lucky Girl. They were closing from off of it. Royal Charter was the pace setter, ended up finishing fifth there. And the horses that tracked her, 
were last and second from last. So I think kind of looking at the race flow, it worked out for her in terms of trip and she likes to close from off of it. So uh, the concern I have with her is that's at a mile and an eighth. Now she's going to go further. I don't think she's going to necessarily get the pace help that she needs, but because she got along with her very well last time out, I, I think in terms of trip, she's still going to be towards probably the back of the pack, but hopefully, you know, the number of lengths she's sitting off the pace isn't that great because she's going to have plenty of work to do in the stretch. Aspen Grove, the number seven, is already a grade one stakes winner going a mile and a quarter. She won the Belmont Oaks in 2023, and Jack Sisterson found a good spot for her last time out, dropping her to a second level allowance, going a mile and three eighths. She was able to get close to the pace, got the jump on the closers, turning for home, and was able to last. She's run some fast races, three consecutive 90 buyers. Yeah, she's going to need pace help, though, Dan. That's the concern with her. I think last time out in the race in New York, they crawled. There was moisture in the turf course. She was able to get a mid pack trip and that worked out well for her. But when you go back to some of her other trips, three back with moisture in the track at Churchill, she got pace help. I know it looks slow, but for yielding, I, I think with the amount of moisture in the track, that's what she needed. And the other horses were tiring and she was able to close on them. Um, just a little concerned about what's going to happen here. I think it's a huge sign though, to see Juan Hernandez climb aboard her. I think he'll be mindful of that. And at least last time out, um, she showed that she can, be a little bit closer depending on the fractions. Let's take a look at our top selections for the grade two Rodeo Drive Race 8 at Santa Anita on Saturday. Beach Bomb is a horse that I'm starting to have a little remorse that I only picked fourth. I want to concentrate on her and my top pick before I scream, you scream in the multiples. But Beach Bomb seems very versatile from a running style standpoint, likely gained a lot of fitness from that last race. Absolutely. And I'm going to hopefully get a price on her. Don't know what she'll be in terms of the morning line or her off odds, but in terms of that first trip, I think she's going to be kind of, I don't know, glanced over for the fact that it was at Monmouth. It wasn't a graded stake or anything like that. I just like the what she showed in the stretch. I think she's going to relish the added distance. I mentioned it, I think, you know, for a first time in the U.S. running, it was a good performance and expect her to take another step forward. We're going to learn a lot more about I Scream, You Scream, the unbeaten three-year-old. She's taking on older. She's going a mile and a quarter for the first time, but maybe she gets an easy lead up front. I'm concentrating on the four and five and multiple race exotics, the two and the three underneath. Ashley's going five, two, four, seven. It's the grade two Rodeo Drive at Santa Anita on Saturday. Good luck. Hey, friends. You look like you're in need of a winner. If you enjoyed the great content right here, just click and subscribe right here and enjoy the great DRF.com race of the days, the phenomenal stakes previews, and so much more. Many of that content featuring me and my exceptional selections. Trust me, you won't regret it.